We're on our way to Isla Cias, part of the National Park Islands of Galicia in Spain. Apparently, pirates use this place to store their treasure. Legend has it there still might be some left to find. footprints behind of us just us and a couple of birds this might look like a relaxing stroll around the island but to be honest Tim and I are really competitive normally I know the best way to the top yeah right we even battle about who makes the best shot okay fair play you win this time Stopping to take in the views, we climb to the highest viewpoint on this part of the island. A long way down. Huh? The views are incredible, as good as it gets. In Vigo, we plan to meet local underwater enthusiast Jose Irisari, with the hope we can learn more about the national park system here and its role for the local environment. After coming from work, linked to the fishing industry, José has since been making beautiful images from diving around the world. We can't wait to meet him. We tie up the boat and go to find José, who's also invited his friend from the Marine Research Institute, Garci. Combined, they've been keeping an eye on the underwater world for decades. The establishment of the natural park nearly 20 years ago, was a very important uh, starting point for establishing marine protected areas. But the professional fishing has been running exactly as before the establishment of the national park. So is, is the marine life in these national park islands protected? No, and not at all. Yep, you heard him right. He said that none of the marine life in the National Park waters is protected. This came as a pretty big shock to us. I mean, what are the national parks even for? To get some kind of understanding of what's going on here, I think it's best for us to start at the beginning and explain how we got to this point. Whoa. Did you see that? So the Rias Bajas are essentially rias, rivers, and they provide really good shelter from the Atlantic swell and all the strong wind you get here. So perfect for us, a bit like Scotland. I'm just ready. And here's some food. I'm going to shut up and uh, enjoy this. Thank you very much, Mitch. You're welcome. The shelter offered by this indented coastline means we could get back to living at anchor. The plan was to slowly hop from ria to ria and enjoy some stress-free days with nature on the doorstep. If only boat life was that easy. Our windlass stopped working. This is the winch at the bow, which we use to lift the anchor. And do you think it's fixed or work? I don't know. I think the, the pin is kind of, the socket screw, I think, is sheared. You can take out some poles, re-grease, blah, 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 withdraw the ratchet drive. There's the ratchet drive. The windlass is going to need to be fixed, but we don't let it stop us from moving on to the next rear. Fishing boat coming out. Arriving at Rio de Rosa, we have amazing conditions for sailing. Good wind, 
flat water, so we just play around at the entrance for a few hours. As we approach our anchorage for the night, you can't help but notice the fishing boats. From the mussel farms, to the bigger boats coming from offshore, to the little boats casting nets from the beach. What is it that makes these waters so rich? By the time we got talking to Jose and Garci, this was one of our first questions. The main factor is the pulling. The wind blowing from the land is moving always the water in the surface outside to the Atlantic, creating an upwelling movement from deep water, deep sea water, and go up just here. It's cold water. So very it's, it's very cold because that is the reason that the, the water here is the colder in Spain by far. Yes. Yeah. It's full of um, mine minerals. Very rich. Very rich. And then together the upwelling and also the rotation of the currents inside the base create a fantastic conditions for the growing of phytoplankton and zooplankton. And the, the sun? Photosynthesis. Okay. So, soap is cold, soap. Yes, it's a biological soup. This was no exaggeration. Look what we saw off the side of the boat at night. Crazy. Can you see the big fish too? Yeah. Oh no, what is this weird oh, thing? He's trying to climb out. Maybe we can set him free. Yeah, let's set him free. But you just ask that. Catch and release. Goodbye, my friend. Mitch is really keen to get in the water, so we're going to do a bit of uh, driving the dinghy over to some rocks. She's going to jump in. Not sure if I'm feeling it. The water doesn't look that nice, surprisingly. It's got stuff floating around and. Uh, so I think I'll leave it to Mitch today. Look this. Bye bye. Uh, oh. Way chillier than the other side of Spain. Colder than the other side of Spain, eh? Yeah. Where is she? There she is. I'll give that three out of ten. Room for improvement. Too much splash. Hey! There you are. <laughs> Definitely some fish there. <laughs> Should we go back? Yeah. Despite Mitch finding fish, we find out later from Jose that things aren't quite like they used to be. 200 years ago, the quantity of pelagic fish in the bay was huge. And nowadays, the quantity of fish inside the bay is nearly nothing. The statics are there to see. Of course, the prime culprit here is overfishing, taking more than can be naturally replenished, a mismanagement of the resources. The crazy thing is, as we were continuing to cruise around the rias, we really had no idea what was going on beneath the surface. Above the water, it's beautiful. Amazing anchorages, cute little towns, Spectacular islands that make you feel like you're in the Caribbean or the South Pacific. We had actually reached out to Jose in the beginning to get a better insight of everything we thought was going right here. Yeah. 
as we set sail to Isle Sias. We were expecting this to be the jewel in the crown, a symbol of great conservation in action. But still nowadays the professional fishing activities are running as ever inside the National Park area. In the park there is one very small protected area. But it's more or less in a muddy, sandy area, not in a very rich from the ecological point of view. It's difficult to look at the place the same way when you know that behind the facade of the National Park label, there's no serious conservation effort for the marine environment. But not all is lost. Garci is part of a team at the Marine Research Institute in Vigo, who are trying to take things forward. Here they attach acoustic receivers to the seafloor so they can track the movements of animals they detect in the area. It's necessary for, uh, to, know, to know the ecology of our fish, our movements uh, and uh, tomar decisions with us. It's yes, to support the decisions, to support the so decisions to... for these species. The wider objective is for the establishment of marine protected areas through the National Park Islands, where regulations are smart based on the data they've collected. That way they can preserve biodiversity while allowing fishing to continue in only a slightly more regulated way. National parks, do you think they can be a good thing if they're managed the right way? Of course, yes. It's the only way. It's the only way. The only, the only opportunity is to establish natural parks and then inside the natural parks manage to establish protected areas. It's the only, the only way, there is not other. If you'd like to learn more about the decline of fisheries and about how marine protected areas can provide a step forward, you can find links in the video description below. Join us next month for chapter 9, where we sail along the Portuguese coast.